Hello guys, welcome back. It is Electronics Channel with a brand new video and today we will be doing something crazy, something we never did before. So stay here and check it out. So you might ask, uh, well, what the hell? Why do we have this? What's this? haven't said anything about this what is this well these are uh, amp meters I made a long time ago and I I actually have a video about it so it's gonna be somewhere on screen check it out it's really cool I am showing the whole process how I built it the schematic is very simple you don't even have to use a, di a digital voltmeter for this one you can use any meter and it will work but that's uh, not what the video is about. I'm actually doing something I promised a long, long, long time ago when I made the first video. And I said, if uh, I get people wanting me to make a better version of this, I will make it. And guess what? This is the better version. So what we're going to do is we will take one of these guys, take it apart and uh, build completely new design so we can calibrate it we can have better accuracy and we can have better well not better less power loss in the device when we measure in current so let's get to it so if you're not familiar with uh, the way uh, these amp meters work uh, it's a very simple amp meter there is nothing really to it uh, I'm, I'm not going to show it to you right now because it's a complete disaster but uh, between this terminal and that terminal there is only one ohm resistor and we're measuring uh, the voltage drop across that resistor with this voltmeter. So the new design is very simple and in fact it's very simple uh, solution to this problem. So we had a one ohm uh, resistor which uh, causes <laughs> heat the only way to decrease the heat is to decrease the ohm value of our shunt resistor and uh, that is exactly what we do so all we're going to do is we will have the same terminals we're gonna have the same case hopefully everything fits inside and then uh, instead of having our one uh, ohm we're going to have 0.1 ohm resistor so uh, 0.1 ohm resistor is 10 times smaller than uh, our previous uh, shunt resistor and the problem is that uh, when we're pushing one amp uh, through the system we will only get uh, 0.1 uh, volts uh, drop 0.1 volts and uh, that is not measurable uh, for this uh, voltmeter and that's exactly what I want to use so if we want to use this and we cannot measure uh, such low uh, voltages because it's not really accurate enough so we have to accommodate for that and uh, the way we do it is uh, let's pretend this is a negative and this is a positive so uh, it's exactly the same design but we're going to make a voltage multiplier so it's going to be a 10x uh, voltage multiplier so uh, when it comes out it's going to be 1 volt so 1 amp equals 1 volt and that's exactly what we're showing on the screen so if we can do uh, this part uh, make it accurate this will be fantastic so first of all to uh, really understand how the circuit works uh, let's uh, draw our uh, input uh, jacks on our amp meter and then uh, we will uh, draw our uh, 0.1 ohm shunt resistor just like so okay so uh, the negative is connected to ground that is very important all right now uh from the high side uh we connect it uh, to our op amp now uh, 
the voltage from shunt resistor goes to a not inverted input and uh, we are using a LAM358 op amp we're only using half of it so we can do two circuits on the same chip and the negative or inverting input is connected with a uh, 10k to ground just like so and then uh, the junction uh, between the inverting input and uh, the resistor is connected with a 100k uh, resistor to our output and it is a variable resistor so we can uh, calibrate our device okay now we have our output uh, which is going to our uh, DVM or digital voltmeter uh, just like that the digital voltmeter is connected to the negative of the internal battery and positive of the internal battery as well as the op amp but it's not shown in the picture and I'm going to draw a lot of digits for you so what we have here is our current will come from positive to negative and uh, we are using uh, conventional current uh, so that's uh, very important to notice because conventional current is exactly opposite of electron flow electron flow goes from negative to positive and, and uh, conventional goes from positive to negative we're using conventional so uh, we have uh, let's say we have one amp uh, passing uh, through our uh, resistor okay we have one amp and then uh, uh, it will cause a 0.1 volt uh, drop across the resistor okay that is fed into the positive uh, not inverting input of uh, our op amp all right and then our op amp is uh, times 10 multiplication so uh, the output voltage uh, will be 1 volt so 0.1 times by 10 is 1 volt just like so so if we calibrate our uh, device precisely it will show the proper reading even though our shunt resistor is 10 times less uh, than in the version uh, 1 so version 2 features a 0.1 ohm resistor and then we have the times 10 multiplicator uh, to accommodate for that uh, we also add a, a capacitor on our output from the op amp in this case i'm using a 4 volt uh, uh, 470 microfarad uh, capacitor uh, that is uh, from the motherboard so these capacitors have high value and very low profile so that's why i use that one uh, and uh, also we are using a 1% uh, shunt resistor uh, that is very important you get a high as high accuracy as possible on measuring the voltage drop so what we have at the moment is we had just built uh, the circuit and uh, I was just uh, trying to tune it up so it will work uh, the way it's intended to work uh, so all what we had planned is working and we are getting our times 10 uh, multiplication in voltage so that is perfect now there is a slight uh, percentage of error and I will demonstrate it for you right now uh, you cannot really calibrate for it because either you calibrate it and it works really well at low currents and then when you go to high currents it's absolutely not accurate and the same way goes the opposite way if you calibrate it for high currents it's not accurate for low currents so uh, the way it's calibrated right now it's calibrated in the middle so it's reasonably accurate at high currents and reasonably accurate at low currents so uh, hopefully uh, that is working out okay so I'm going to measure uh, the voltage drop across the shunt resistor and as you can see it's about two times less than what it should be so 
yeah pretty much anyway uh, what we're going to do right now is I will put a load on the motor and as you can see now it's getting more accurate getting more accurate now so as you can see it's pretty accurate right now and then when we go even higher it's still accurate then when I short out the motor we have some percentage of error as I said but I think it's still a reasonably uh, good amp meter so what we have at the moment is we have our amp meter I skipped uh, the filming process for assembling this thing uh, it doesn't take a lot of time it only took me about 20 minutes to fully assemble and fully solder everything and get the parts uh, so pretty good considering this is very easy project uh, so what we have here is we have our load so we have a 12 volt 20 watt light bulb we have our our amp meter we have a voltmeter that is measuring the voltage drop across our shunt resistor this number is 10 times smaller than this number theoretically so they should match um, and uh, I'm just going to put something over the bulb so it's not too bright so uh, first we're going to apply 3.3 uh, .3 volts to the bulb 3 to 1 so now we are applying 3.3 volts to the bulb and as you can see uh, the numbers are almost exactly the same and this is very, very exciting because this is a homemade meter and it's performing really well so now let's, let's apply a higher voltage okay so now it's off and uh, the reason is the numbers are going down slowly because I have a capacitor uh, there which smooths out any inconsistency for current. Anyway, we're applying 5 volts. As you can see, we got the light here coming out. So we're applying 5 volts right now, and again, the number matches perfectly. Uh, there is some percentage of error. Uh, we cannot blame me or the device for that because nothing is perfect so there is a voltage drop in the wires and everything so that is okay so we are uh, rocking 5 volts let's apply uh, 12 3 2 1 so we just had applied 12 volts and as you can see uh, the percentage of error becomes quite significant uh, we actually have uh, 3.9 amps here and then only 3.78 so 3.8 here and then 3.9 here so we have uh, 100 milliamps more uh, that is totally normal uh, it's accurate enough for uh, our purposes so it it's still a very good amp meter so uh, we just had tested the meter now I'm just wondering how it compares to the previous generation I made so I'm just wondering how accurate this is comparing to this so as you can see again we have higher accuracy here than here so uh, just another comparison I have my two meters hooked up measuring current and then we have our version 2.0 measuring current and then version 1 measuring the current so uh, we're going to go to 3.3 uh, volts here and as you can see again it's pretty accurate it's accurate enough so we can actually depend on this meter when measuring the current so I'm going to 12 volts and I'm going to cover it and as you can see it's pretty accurate back to 3.3 back to 5 
So that's about it for this video. If you like the video, you know what to do. Leave a like down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you will know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you next time.